roll around just to just to show the ball who's boss. So we go right back to the beginning and set ourselves up on the ball for good posture for all of these exercises. So, put your feet together, turn your toes out at 10 to 2, lift your heels behind. And if you look then, your hips, which are the bony bit, not the outside bit, that's a bit of blubber, the bony bit. Knees, feet in alignment and feet are facing the front. And that's where we want it the whole time. I know you have to find a level bit. It might be there, Claire, on that little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get the neck lengthened and the shoulders down and back exactly as we do when we're standing. So if you don't have a ball, you're not excluded, you just do it standing up. <sighs> okay, now we want the neutral spine. So again, side I'll show you. You're just going to be tipping forward and backwards, high. And then you want to make that movement smaller and smaller, sucking that belly in until you stop in the middle. <laughs> Cuba. <laughs> and there's your neutral spine. Now, pelvic floor is, is brilliant on the ball because your pelvic floor is practically in contact with the ball. So that's really good to feel. Okay, so put your hands on your thighs. Squeeze your pelvic floor up to the top. If your thighs move and engage, then you know you're using your thigh muscles. If you just watch my height of my head, if you're squeezing your bum by mistake instead of your pelvic floor, you're going up and down. So you need to relax your bum muscles, which are your glutes. Relax these muscles. Now, put your hands on your belly. When you squeeze up, if your belly's going in and out, you're using your belly muscles instead of your pelvic floor. So relax those as well. Easy. And that's something you can practice in your office chair, in the car. It's easy to feel when you're sat down, okay? Now we want to uh, engage the core. So we talk a lot, but in, in any class you'll hear them say abs, core, brace, belly button to spine, tummy tight, zip, all those things mean brace these muscles here. Best way to do that and the quickest way to do that is put your hands on your belly, do a little cough, <laughs> and as you cough, perhaps side your seat better, as you cough, bring it in. You see the difference? Uh -huh. That's it. That's all it is. We breathe in Pilates in through the nose for four and out through the mouth for four. And what that does, it keeps your breath rate, your heart rate, your all your, um, what you call it, I've forgotten the name of it, um, your inner clock working properly. If you find yourself panting, you're working too hard. And if you find yourself holding your breath, you're working too hard. It's all going on here. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh God. So we can now start. Let's mobilize the neck. And this isn't any force. So anybody there, I don't know you. This is where I'm going to tell you now. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. If you've got any injuries, you must look after yourself here because I can't see you. I can only see Claire and I know her history. So if you've got any injuries, perhaps you shouldn't be doing it unless you've been told by your doctor that Pilates is good for you. And any physiotherapist will say, do the exercises and go up to, not into pain. So if I've got no neck issues, so I can go as far as I like, but if I had got neck issues, which Simon has, then he might only go that far one way and much further the other way. And what that means is you're using your muscles and your joints up to their maximum at the moment. So don't worry. And then if you do that, inflammation will die back, injuries will be cured, uh, up to the sky and chin to chest. Uh, injuries will be cured and you'll be back on the road to recovery very quickly. 
doing back to your sport, back to your normal everyday life. If you wreck and keep in keeping um, aggravating your injuries, they take much, much longer to get better. Okay, uh, now let's draw a circle with a nose. We're not going to do many now, we've done lots there. And the other way. And now we need shoulders. Take your shoulders down. Oh, that's nice. A certain Michelle made me do too many press ups this morning. change direction. Now bring the whole arm in. Again, if one hurts, one might be better than the other, or you might need to rest one. But if you're injured, my recommendation is not to do nothing. My recommendation is to keep moving in your um, range of movement up to not into pain. I mean, discomfort is one thing, pain is something else. So if I had a bad shoulder and I kept it still in a sink, sling for six weeks, by the time it came out of the sling, either my shoulder might be locked or my elbow might be locked or my wrist might be locked. So you've got to keep moving if you, if you can, if you're told to. Okay, let's do that waist again. I've already done this, but turn in the waist. There. Oh, I did the bed together. Just roll the ball out. <laughs> so I just want to stretch the hamstrings and the bum. So your bum is here, obviously, and your hamstring runs from your bum. So just by doing this. Now, if you are doing any of these stretches and you round your back, you're not getting a good stretch. But if you have your back neutral spine and you're basically sticking your bum out, you know, then you're getting the stretch in the right place. So that's a really nice one. All right, I'll come, I'll come back to the front. Now what I'm going to do is just the ankles. So I've got to tiptoes and down. Hi. And now turn the ankle. Well, I can do both together. Thank goodness for the weather. Last week it was just raining and raining. ready to go and we're going to do some hit to start with I'm afraid. I know it's hot but it's a nice breeze blowing. The hit we're going to do, I'm going to shift my mat out of the way so I don't trip over it, is lunges. Now for some reason you could do walking lunges but obviously I can't because I'll go off camera but you guys can do walking lunges and a walking lunge you have the ball in front of you. Just lift it above your head just to make sure that's okay. The thing is you're using your chest muscles because you're squeezing the ball otherwise you drop it on your head. So what we're going to do is walk forward and into a lunge. Now a lunge, if you look, this knee is down towards the floor. My body is upright. This isn't a lunge. This is the lunge we want. And then you can keep walking. But I'm going to stay here and do it in front of you. So we're going to do it in Tabata timing. So you've got 10 seconds to prepare. And then we're going to start. So you'll hear the beeper. So what we're doing on Tabata, 20 seconds work, 10 seconds rest, eight times. I'll show you from the front, here we go. So notice my hips are, my knees and my feet are hip distance apart. I don't want to be out here and I don't want to be like this because that's really hard to balance. Okay. to start on the other leg if you can, doesn't matter if you can't. I'm going to come backwards now just to make it different. Oops. Keeping that core tight, keeping those shoulders down, they're not up around your ears. Keeping that belly tight, pelvic floor lifted. Don't forget to put your heart rate monitor on, like I haven't. Go. Keep a sit. Lie down. The lower you 
go, the harder it is. And a little pause at the bottom is even better. Because momentum really helps with exercises. Momentum means you're using gravity and momentum to work instead of muscle. So a little pause here is brilliant. And if you've got dodgy knees, why not just do this instead? Because like I said, this is a modification so that those people with bad knees or bad hips, you're still exercising, right? But you're not hurting yourself. And also what it's doing is spreading the weight. So you could even go this far down if you want to, if your knees and hips will allow. But it means that instead of being on one leg, you've got two legs. Way this time for you. Down. Up. Fortunately, my grass isn't a bowling green. It's very uneven, which is probably better because it's making my ankles and calves and everything work a bit harder and my balance. <laughs> so that was six of eight, by the way. I've actually got a counter. So two more, what's that? 40 seconds work, come on, we can do it. Making sure those knees are in line with the hips, feet are in line with the knees. Horrifyingly, I see this quite a lot and it just worries me about your hips. Super, one more. Brilliant. How's that feel? Right, what you might need to do now is shake your legs off. As though you've got like a crab stuck at the end of your toe. The legs nicely. Hello. Hi Gina. Hi Andy. Right, the next series is on your side. I've got to be honest, I've never done this outside on this dodgy uh, uneven lawn, <laughs> but I do like it inside. So it's side series, three moves. We're we'll probably trying to do ten of each. <laughs> so you can do it on your elbows do it on your shoulders, uh, on your outstretched hand if you prefer. So, if you're doing it on your elbows, put, I'm just checking them on camera still, legs straight, I've now got the ball in between my outstretched legs. Now, I've got a big kink in my, in my uh, li body line, which is rubbish. So I need to get that hip above there. So now, my knee, ankle, shoulder is all in a straight line. Have this hand here if you want it for um, balance. And when we're ready, we're going to do 10. And what 10 is, is lifting hips off the floor and down. And it's not easy when you're on grass, gotta say. Okay, here we go. Two, three, four. Look, if you need to, you can just squeeze the ball. And again, if you need to, you can have this hand here to help you. Because it it's the ball moving that is making you work so hard. Because I'm not kidding, this is really hard, hard keeping in a straight line. And that's not just me. I've lost count. Are we counting? Eight. Eight, thank you, monitor. Nine. Ten. Okay, brilliant. Next one. This top leg stays here. Make sure you stay in your nice alignment. And now we're going to bring that ball up and down, 10 of those, without dipping your hips back. I want to try and show you, I mm, can't show you from the side. So bring it up and down, two, three, four. 
still make sure that this hip is on the floor, this waist isn't going all saggy into the floor, it's lifted, and this hip is directly above the other hip, your core engage, your elbows, your shoulders are down and back, it's actually a lot to think about. Alright, next one, very dodgy, I'm going to rest this leg on the floor, and this leg is on there, perfect. So it's slightly on the side, it's not on the top, it's on the side. And now I am using this leg to help me. I'm going to just lift and down. Blooming hard. But then you didn't want an easy pass. So you're really squeezing your bum to get up there. You're using your shoulders. You can put your hand down for balance if you want it, but let's not. Not easy. Simon, oh, two more I think, that is hard, so you're really pressing down with the ball, and I'm going to do one more, uh, there you go, there's the third exercise, that's a killer, so that one actually hurt my, hurt, used my bottom side, rather than my top side, my slightly worry now is I'm going uphill, however, so, Bottom legs on the floor, top legs on top, feet are facing you, elbow down, and make sure, so first of all I'm sat back in my hips, get that hip on top of that one, leg face, toes facing the front, this hand for balance, get this waist off the floor, lifted, keep the hand here for balance, and lift and lower, lift and lower. Three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, not easy, eight, pulling it in, in and out. So we're using all these muscles here. I'm not lifting it at the front, definitely at the top. Three, four, <laughs> yay, five, six, seven, eight. I just remember to grow out of my shoulders not down here. leg that's on the foot that's on the floor and taking those hips as high as you can squeezing your bum squeezing your core pushing out of the shoulder otherwise you'll hurt it shoulders have had a hammer in there haven't they yeah. and they're having another hammer in because we're doing press ups kill or cure i said that they hurt this morning from michelle's class well this is kill or cure so the good thing about the ball is you can modify the exercise to make it very very easy to do press ups should you be recovering from an injury in your shoulder so but if you're not recovering from an injury in your shoulder then you can until you found your level. So we are going to do 10, then we're going to have a rest and we're going to do 10 more. So this is how you find your level. So first of all, those people with injuries to your shoulder, 
if you look, I've got the ball under my belly. I've still got my feet on the floor at the moment. My hands are just on the edge of the mat. My neck is lengthened, so we don't want the neck down here. We don't want it up here. Now I'm going to lift my feet off the floor. If you can put your feet together, there you're now using your inner thighs as well, and you can feel a bit of a squeeze on the bum better. And all you do is you lower your nose towards the floor. So that's if you've got an injury and you're recovering from a shoulder injury or an arm injury and you need to strengthen it without hurting yourself. But anybody who is not recovering from an injury, you could have the ball under here. It's long as, look how my belly's dipping, we don't want that, we want a flat back. So you could do your 10 press-ups here. So I do, tell you what I see a lot, I see people going like this, it's really hard on your shoulders. What you want to do is take the chest down and the nose. Three. And look at the speed. When you go to the gym, you see lots of people doing, oh, loads and loads of press-ups like that. No, we go down slowly, or we come up slowly. If that's too easy for you, because I know I've got some real fitties in my class, you can have the ball here. When you want to rest, go back and just hang over the ball. And we're going to do another set of ten. But I'll let you have a rest first. Okay. Shake the shoulders if you need to. Clouds come over again. It's not going to rain. Come on, half now. It's not going to rain. Right, we can do another set of press ups when you're ready. I am going to go extreme now by having the ball under my feet rather than under my shins. So, just to show you that it's called a decline press up really, but declined off the wall. So, go across, keep going, keep going, feet on the ball. One, two, three. You choose your move though. Four, five, six, that's hard. Seven. up. Good. So we'll have a little bit of a rest from the wrist and we'll do bridge now. So if you just have a bit of a rest while I show you. Bridge. So again bridge can be made as easy as you like and as you know I can tell you I've got a hamstring injury so I'll probably stay at the easy level. So I'm rested now, shoulders down and back. I want you to just inhale, as you exhale, just lift your bum off the floor, give it a swing around, just so you know what it feels like. If the ball's trying to wander off, just open your legs a little bit, it's easier. But try and do it with your feet together. So, we're going to do 10, but we're going to squeeze at the top. So you lift and push the ball away and give it a big squeeze of the bum, squeeze the tummy, and down. Big squeeze. So again, there's the modified. If you want to make it harder, you take the ball further away from you, and now you've got more to lift. Same weight, but it's physics, isn't it? So while you're there, if you want to, you can go up, bring it in, take it out. But that really hurts my hamstrings, so I'm not going to do it. You can go. Go back to the other one because this is much much more difficult 
And the other thing that's hard about this is that the ball is really trying to roll off somewhere, so you have to work extremely hard to keep the ball in place. I've got my fingertips on my hips, so I can feel that my hips aren't dropping. I've got one more to do. yourself by landing on anything. The way to get on your ball <laughs> is I've got my knees wide, hands on the front and then I just put all the weight on my hands, roll forward, roll forward, roll forward. Now my shins are on the ball and now I'm standing up. You see everything shaking? That is really hard work. It's hard work on the bum, the legs. Can we just kind of hang thing to do if you fall is just crumble put your hands down so if I show you from the side is to use the dumbbells okay for a variety yay well done the concentration on that <laughs> face till I made her laugh <laughs> this is where it gets tricky because you want your dumbbells or something so we're going to do 10 of each so it's bicep curls which it, the bicep curls are these okay and the second lot are these and then the third lot, we're going to dump one, hold one, and your triceps. So what will happen is you'll probably fall off heaps of times. What I do is just wang the, the when, if I'm falling, I just get, get rid of the uh, weights so I don't land on them or try and fall while holding them. Just get rid. Okay. Anyway, try and have a laugh at yourself because uh, it's the only way. It's funny. It's hard work. <laughs> I might not even get up. <laughs> right, we're in business. Okay, here we are. One. If you stare at a still spot on the floor, you're very more likely to be able to stay balanced. If you're still struggling to get on the ball, you could have a wall or a chair or something. If you notice, I'm not relaxing my arms all the way down. I'm keeping it switched on. So I'm not going all the way to the top and resting here. I'm going from this to this to keep it switched on. I think that's 10. So I am actually now gonna have a little rest. Well done. We're modifying it by sitting on the ball because, right now I'm gonna try and do this. One, two, and again, I'm not resting down here. I'm starting point here, up and down. And I can't look at you because I have to stare at my little blade of grass. Five, six, I'm clinging on for grim death with my shins and my feet. 
two more. All right, I'm gonna ditch one. <laughs> and take this here and then take it by my hair. My thighs are killing me. One, two, well done, three. <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally I would go around and help while they're falling all on their faces, but I can't because I'm not allowed to touch anybody. So I'm just watching them fall all over the place. Oh, my thighs, God. Oh, Basham. Could not do that another second longer. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you did very well. Oh. So what you need to do again is bring these legs up to here. That is hard. And I've got to say, again, it's much easier if you're on a nice smooth carpet or studio floor. But we are on our on very uneven lawn. Right, we're gonna go back to the shoulders. And we're doing one that's called toe taps. And again, you can make this as easy or as difficult as you want. So we're in that plank position with our feet on the ball. So at the moment, I've got the ball under my thighs. I've got my wrists under my shoulders. Instead of here with my belly hanging low, I have got my belly tight, my core tight, my, my bum tight, and then all you do is tap off to the side. This is what, ow, this is one you can do quickly, by the way. Now, if that's easy, you can come out and have the ball here and toe tap. And my problem is I've got some weights there, so I need to move them. If you need to rest, just go like this, because it's lovely. If you don't need to rest, we're here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it's ten each side, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoa. You see how quick that was and how light it was? Well done. We're going to do that one more time. Okay. And I've just seen the time, my goodness. I did say it was going to be hard, didn't I? Are we ready for round two? Into position. So, nice and light on the feet. Get your neck lengthened. One, two, three. Rest when you need to. Seven, eight, tummy, tummy tight, shoulders relaxed, believe it or not. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Shoulders rest. I said it was gonna be hard, didn't I? So that got, was a full workout, by the way. You were using your thighs, your bum, all your middle, your shoulders, your wrists. If they need a rest, do that. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Right. <sighs> we need to lie down. Have the ball with you, of course. So this one is called the ball pass over and I think you know what it is and you can go straight into it but we have to warm up first. Have the ball handy, like here. Knees are up to the ceiling, feet and everything's hip distance apart, shoulders down and back. First of all I want to make sure you've got your neutral spine. Just feel by arching your back and pushing your hand under, now squeezing down onto your hand and arching it. Make that movement smaller and smaller so you are easing but not pushing. You're not trying to squash a grape, you're trying to hold a grape to stop it moving. That's engaged core. You see from here, we should be blobby thing, here, engaged. We need the core engaged the whole flipping time. Take your hands up to the sky with the ball so you're using your chest muscles to keep the ball, otherwise it drops on your face. 
So from there, I want you to take the ball to your knees first, back up to the middle and then all the way over. And I want you to really think hard about your back and your belly. If it moves even an inch, a centimeter, it's too tough. So then you make the ball nearer by having your arms bent and you do it here, but otherwise here. Right, how did that feel? Now I want you to try the other end. I want you to put the ball, first of all, in between your calves. And I just want you to see if you can lower it without your back coming off the floor. If your back comes off the floor, it's not good for you. So it's can you keep it on the floor? Keep that core engaged. So if you can do all of that, then you can do the full movement, which is this. And we're going to do 10. One, two. And of course, the longer the legs, they're a lever, the heavier they are. I know they're the same legs and they weigh the same, but if you've got this ball and these legs close to your body, then, then they're lighter than if you have them here. This makes them heavier, I promise. Anyway, so there we go, five, six. Don't rush it, seven, eight, We have a little bit of a rest and then we do it again. <sighs> if you've got a drink, have some. Mine's like over there. You okay there at the back of the room? <laughs> I okay. can't see her now because my laptop's in the way. <laughs> but she's moving, so I know she's okay. All right, we're going to do the same again. Grab the ball. Start with an up here. Another little tip, by the way, if you have your toes flexed, right, this is pointy, this is flexed. If you have your legs straight and your foot flexed, then every time you bring the ball here, you're getting a nice little stretch all down the back of the leg, which is very good for you, especially if you're a cyclist. So let's go. So it's one, two, three. Nice and smooth. I'm not using momentum. I'm not using the weight of the ball, I'm controlling it all the way. And I've lost count. Nine. Oh. Is that ten? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Five to five. I was talking too much. Okay, brilliant. Have a rest. <sighs> There's one more I want to do with the weights, which I have lost. So, Claire. Uh, you've got yours there, yeah? Yeah. Right. You don't have to use the weights, but have them ready in case you do want them when you've seen what we're doing. So, I'm sitting on the ball, and all I do is I roll, 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 here. Keep rolling until the ball. If I'm um, not feeling very strong, I would have the ball here. But you know me, dead hard. I'm putting the ball under my neck to support my neck and my shoulders. I've got my weights. So, hips down here is bad, 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 and useless and not doing a lot. So, first of all, to have your hips up here, you're having to use your bum muscles, your thigh muscles, your hamstring. Now take the, the uh, what do you call them, dumbbells here. And we don't want to be resting down here on the ball, so keep them lifted the whole time. That's your starting point. And we go up to the sky and down, nice and slow. Push away and down. Right, keep checking your core's tight. Keep checking your pelvic floor's tight. Is your bum tight? Exhaling on the way up is nice and it sort of gives you a little bit of a purpose. work here your legs are all doing all the work you don't need them but I've got Claire here and, uh, what good is this to Claire I'm not telling you which Claire I'm not embarrassed so it's just Claire right have a rest but, and I just choose not to drop them I choose to just rest them here to be honest and we can do it all again so are we ready 
starting point, lift your bum up to the sky, and off we go. One, two, all under control. I'm not dropping down, I'm bringing it down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, last one. One, stay here and hold it here while we're here. We're just going to do some triceps. One, so your bum should be screaming at you now. Mine is. to do it on the ball because it's too wobbly you can do it down here like this you can do it here but it's this movement no bums in the air bums are flat but it's this movement okay here if you want to try it on the ball you can have your elbows on the ball but what i don't want is your chest because i'm just resting there aren't i so if i've got my elbows on the floor i need my chest off the floor and if you are sticky hands, because my ball gets slippy sometimes, but otherwise, we're here. <sighs> so when you get, oh and yeah, don't put your hands on the top of the ball because it hurts your wrist. Have them slightly at the side, but do make sure they're not slippy. The way I do that is I just spit on, <laughs> spit on them a bit. I'm a lady. <laughs> okay, so taking it down to plank, your plank. I feel quite happy here now. Slowly. I'm doing 10 on the same side, 2 at that speed. If you do it at this speed, A, you'll fall over, but B, you're using momentum. Same on the other side. Okay, out into plank first, shoulders down and back. Legs out to meet each other. I'm going to do 10 on this side. One, two. For all you cyclists, this is fantastic. Strengthening your back. One more because I might have cheated. Brilliant. <laughs> Four. 
still sticking. Okay, brilliant, we've done. Now we need to stretch because it's really important. I presume your husband is arriving at seven. So, first of all, just get those wrists to rest because they okay, were well, maybe I shouldn't like this yet, I? so hard. Hello. Hey, it's priorities. This is really nice for your wrist, and if you have had an operation on your wrist like I did years ago, this is so good for you for mobility of your wrist. Because I had my wrist in a splint for a while, and uh, when I got it out, it was like, and the other way, and then shake them that way, and that way. So sorry, I wrecked your wrist, but no, I'm not really. Okay, what do we need to stretch? We need to stretch our hip flexors because we use those a lot. So we do that without the ball, but we just have it there, you know. So I have. I should show you this way, haven't I? I have my feet, my feet and knees are hip distance apart. Take the one forward, take a long stretch. Long, long stretch. My hands on my thighs. If you can just slightly pelvic tilt, you don't have to quite go down so far. But actually, it's quite, it's quite nice to think. So from the side, it looks like this. From the side, your ankle, it's a bit dodgy for the knee, over stretches these muscles and ligaments. You get cramps in your foot, to curl your toes up. And slowly come out of it, same the other side. Big step forward and gently drop into it. And we're going to hold it here because it is a developmental stretch at the end of it. lots of other muscles. Best way to do a child pose, to multitask, is to do wide leg. So you have your knees very wide, toes together. Hands on top of the ball. Push the ball away from you and now ease your bum down onto your heels. And if you look now, if I was on the floor, I would only be able to get to there. But because the ball is higher, I can develop the stretch by dropping my head down. So now I'm getting an inner thigh stretch, a bum stretch, a hip stretch, a shoulder stretch, a back stretch. We're just going to relax here. Feel okay? You can speak. Who me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can speak out loud because I haven't said who you are, Claire. Right, now to stretch the sides, I'm just rolling the ball slightly that way. In fact, if I do it the other way, you'll be able to see. So what I'm getting now is a stretch all the way from here, 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 here to here. Just by tipping the ball on its side. stretch the hamstrings now because we use those in that bridge the mind we use them. The best way to do it, I'll do it this way to downhill then. So I've got one leg at the side of the ball. I'm leaning back, I'm rounding my back and 
I'm dropping one leg up. Right. So I don't, because I do have quite long hamstrings, I haven't got a stretch there. For you cyclists and runners, this might be killing you already. So first thing, look at my awful shoulders. Let's get the shoulders, grow out of the shoulders, chest proud. First thing you need to do is flex your foot. Okay, if you still haven't got a stretch there, then all you do then is push this lot forward. So you're trying to arch your back. And now I've got a stretch now. Nice one, gentle one, nothing hard. And that is actually all the way down my neck. And the good thing about the ball, you see, is you can just roll it. Whereas if you did this on a chair, the chair's fixed. So as you relax, and your muscles relax, you probably might be able to develop the stretch a bit more by just growing up even more. When you're stretching, if your legs are shaking, you're overdoing it. When you're exercising, your legs are shaking. I am proud of you because you're working very hard, but not when you're stretching. So if I was overstretching now, my leg was going like this, I am really about to hurt or twang the muscle. So drop back a little bit. And then while we're there, let's circle the ankle. So I don't know about you, but every morning, or actually when I've been sat still for too long, my ankles are always stiff, and I don't know why. So I do a lot of this at the moment. Okay, let's change legs. So you'll start a little bit easier on yourself, and you might notice one leg better than the other. First thing, grow out of the chest. Next thing, flex the foot. See, I've got the stretch already. <sighs> Need some suggestions for next week, the week after. It might be a coup. I think it's the week after, about the 11th or something of July. We might have the um, the old Sky team, the A unit. I can't say it. Helenus, Simon, the, the Sky Cycling team. Oh. That's not Sky anymore. It's called Ilenus. Ilenus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, here. Simon. Simon. He knows everything. So has that. If that has dropped off a little bit, because they were with us last week. And they were in the Alps last week training. Is it funny when you have a mental block about a word and you oh can't no. say it? I don't know where we are from. That's a good stretch. It's a very nice stretch, actually. Completely in control. As soon as you've overdone it a bit, you can ease off by rolling the ball up a fraction. And then as soon as you realise you're a little bit warm and you want to develop the stretch, you can just push it away. And relax. So actually what you've done then, you might need to do your wrist again, but in those stretches we've stretched everything we've used except the belly. Now there's one more stretch that a lot of people aren't happy about, but I am, and I know that Claire is. And it's called the wheel pose from um, yoga. So I start here, but if you've never done this before, now might not be the time to try it. So, I roll here, roll and roll and roll and roll. I'm not scared of this ball. I've fallen off it so many times, it's not very far. And then I've got my arms out to the side. As soon as I feel happy, I can drop it. And then I can take my hands around. Now I've got the best stretch ever all down the front. And I absolutely love it. Can you say the name of the sky team out loud now, please? Because we can't remember. Ineos. 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 I'm so sorry. So now what I'm doing now is I'm bringing my feet without moving them. I'm pulling my feet back towards the ball, which is in developing the stretch a bit more. There's some of you yogis there. Uh, Claire can't do this because her ball is much bigger than mine. But you can put your hands here and then you can lift yourself off. And it's a good way of doing this pose, but you've always got the ball there in case you uh, go into splatbill mode. But anyway, that was not why we were doing it. We were doing it to stretch our tummies because they've worked really hard and because it's relaxing. <sighs> Perhaps you could think of three things to be grateful for today while you're here. To come out of it. First thing you want to do is bring your chin up to your chest because you're bringing the weight towards the ball and then you come up a little bit more and a bit more and then the ball starts to move and you're upright. And you're actually done, probably 
done in, but hey, done will be good. So I hope you realise there that all these moves, the ball can help you by making it easier and it can also make it bloody hard. And then we brought the weights in as well because I knew Claire was here and she's a fitty and so we wanted to push it. So anybody, who, I, know, I know there's a lot of you there that are very fit as well.